lecture for today, a design of data collection instrument. Even though the title is a bit general, data collection instrument, but it's specifically on questionnaire design, right? So this is mostly for those who are involved with uh, survey research, research which require you to uh, prepare a set of questionnaire which you would later distribute to your respondents and uh, collect their uh, questionnaire like data from there and use it for your uh, uh, analysis. Okay. I will, so, um, I will start, uh, I will go with my uh, lecture today, uh, listing the various steps that you need to do before you can produce a good uh, questionnaire. So there are about like uh, several, uh, 15 or so steps. So I'll start with the first one first, right? So you have to have uh, the purpose for doing the questionnaire. The purpose of doing the questionnaire is basically you need to know, need to determine the current status or the current situation of the subject matter that uh, you are working on. You can start your questionnaire by asking yourself a few important questions. Like number one, what do I need to know? This research, what do I need to know? And why do I need to know it? You can list down this, uh, uh, answer these short questions, uh, which later on will help you in developing your questionnaire. You have to start from very basic questions. And then once you get your result, what happened? You know, what will happen as a result of this questionnaire? What do you do once you collect the data? And the very important question that you can ask is that, can I get the information that I want from existing sources instead of conducting a survey? Can I get it from uh, historical data? Can you get it? Can I get it online from reports? Means from secondary data? Or do I have to develop a new questionnaire? Maybe I could use the questionnaire that has already, you know, it's already available out there. In fact, some, um, some uh, experts or some people or some reviewers prefer you to use existing questionnaire that has been adapted to your situation because the existing questionnaire that is available out there has been proven that it works and is suitable. All you have to do is you test the reliability and the validity of those questionnaire in within your context. So rather than you know designing your own questionnaire, which for, for sure will take a long time, sometimes it's better if whatever objective that you're looking at can be achieved by using the existing questionnaire, just download the existing questionnaire, but you have to test its validity on your um, on your uh, research proposition. So these are the four the second step, uh, a step that once you know the question that you are trying to answer, you got to decide what you are measuring. Are you measuring um, of your respondents, their knowledge or their skills, their goals, intention, aspirations, behaviors and practices, or perception of knowledge, skills, or behaviors it is perceptions of knowledge, skills, or behavior, not uh, you know, the, above their knowledge, skills, and behaviors. Okay, so this, I, I, I think, over the years, some thesis that you survey research that I read, there are, there are tendencies among the students that they ask, they ask their respondents very tough technical question technical questions which he themselves uh, you know, the researcher the student themselves is supposed to be uh, the expert in that area because they are the one who is doing the research in that they are the one who did the literature review and everything yet they 
they developed the question based on their literature review and asked the not so educated of those uh, um, uh, respondents, the layman respondents, the questions uh, which are very technical and ask whether or not they agree to, uh, you know, ask the respondents to state their degree of agreement, whether they strong, strongly agree, of course, the favorite method is to use the Likert scale, strongly disagree to strongly agree. What did they ask the agreement on? They asked the, whether or not, for example, the uh, respondents agree um, urbanization uh, cause uh, stress in uh, mental health, uh, mental health, okay, or something totally out of the comprehension of the respondent. Some of these questions are very technical, and yet you ask them to those respondents who, you know, who who are totally alien to this kind of things. They wouldn't be able to answer you. you. You got to keep in mind that your survey, you can use your survey to only ask their attitude. What, you know, if they like something, if they don't like something, or their knowledge that what is relevant to them. You don't go and ask them uh, knowledge about architecture, knowledge about urban planning, which are very technical knowledge. And then you ask them whether, uh, uh, they agree or not. Okay. And then number three is you got to know whom you sh the question should be asked to. Okay. Meaning that in survey research, you have to know your target population or your uh, sampling frame. I think some of you, I, not some of you, I think most of, uh, most of you have gone through research methodology. When you do survey research, you know, when you do research, you have your uh, population. Uh, population that you want to generalize your findings to. And then from that population, you can set your target population, uh, your sampling frame. Meaning that the population that you are going to select your sample from, that's sampling frame. And then you decide whether you're going to do sampling or census. Census meaning that you collect, you survey every single one, uh, every single individual in the population. Most of the time, this is hardly done because of several, you know, uh, reasons. Uh, the most important thing is the, 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 the cost. And sometimes you cannot even get in touch with everyone. That's another reason too. Okay. And another reason is that sometimes you have a big population. Okay. Then uh, another thing that you need to consider is uh, for whom do the results apply? Because that will indicate that will determine the external validity of your study. Survey research, the very uh, fact that you're doing survey research, the purpose is to be able to generalize. So that is important. If you do a sample of 150 samples, for example, and then you choose your samples incorrectly, you don't set your sampling frame correctly and you fail to generalize, that is a failure in survey research. Because in survey this is research, important too, because most of the time, step number four is consider your audience or consider your respondents. You got to know your, you cannot run away from this. You have to know your respondents. You have to know, uh, you know, their education level, their uh, average age, their socioeconomic background. Yeah, familiarity with tests and questionnaires and uh, some other cultural bias, their language barrier, or even so to a certain extent, their uh, uh, level of patience. Because if you bring out a questionnaire that might take them one hour to finish, nobody, probably nobody will answer your questionnaire. Okay? But unless they are very, very patient. Um, get to know your audience by, you know, do some field testing of your questionnaire with uh, other people who are familiar to your respondents before you administer the final version. Uh, let's say, for example, if, if you're, 
if your field work, or if you're going to study uh, in Nigeria and you are here in um, Malaysia during MCO, so what you can do is that you can field test, you can still field test your question by distributing your question to your fellow Nigerian who are familiar with the uh, your potential uh, respondents okay? and ask them to imagine that you know, they are those uh, people see if they can answer your question or if see if they're comfortable with your question if see if they get what you are trying to you know express if you do that that will allow you to improve uh, unclear question or procedures and you can detect errors beforehand before you go down to the field uh, to do your um, data collection that is much better because uh, by then it will be too late for you to you know uh, improve your questionnaire how do you choose uh, actually you know you, we can set one uh, lecture just on choosing appropriate data collection method but uh, today i'm not going to dwell into this because it'll take a long time i'm just telling you that you know these are the methods that people use uh, to distribute the questionnaire <clears throat> either through mail nobody I, I don't think anybody do that anymore okay uh, mail here means snail mail the one that will take you two or three days to reach uh, the destination uh, you can use the phone uh, people hardly use this no more because of actually the, the the phone survey has been spoiled by telemarketers okay people don't like receiving uh phone call asking them a bunch of questions because uh, it sounds like scammers or telemarketers so that 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 has been these people have spoiled that uh, uh possibility of collecting data through telephone the best thing probably is you go to face interviews but it, and again it is expensive and of course during this time like this uh, MCO you can do that okay now the most popular method is just blast uh, web based blast Google form survey monkeys but this is very convenient but you got to be careful right who you are blasting that uh, Google forms to and some people some people they design the Google form incorrectly and they allow the respondents to uh, answer it multiple times okay uh, and sometimes uh, you know one person you know in order to support you know and quote or in order to sabotage the research they can answer yeah, one single one person can answer that questionnaire 10 times over And uh, sometimes, or hopefully, the researcher himself not uh, will not be answering that uh, the questionnaire. Okay, pretending that he is somebody else. And you can also use uh, apps. So I put a link to a very interesting uh, apps. Eh, use, for please consider the pros and the cons of each in getting the information that you want, and choose the one that best suits your requirements and constraint and that best suits your respondents right if your respondents cannot read the best of course the best method is to do face-to-face -face interviews are you guys still out there this is uh, normally questionnaires uh, some people uh, that this will affect the way people uh, want to answer or do not want to answer your questionnaires too whether your questionnaires is confidential or anonymous okay confidential is the kind of questionnaire that uh, take notes of the respondent you know the researcher will be able to detect who the respondents are so names or identifiers identifiers are used to follow up or to match data from pre-test and post-test uh, post -test. sometimes you carry out questionnaire twice one you know once before you uh, introduce any kind of experiment and another one is after you introduce any after you, you introduce the experiment right for example 
Okay, you are trying to see if a group of students can get better knowledge by reading this new book that uh, you just published. So you distribute, before you distribute the books to the student, you distribute the questionnaire first. That is pre-test. And then, then you distribute the book to the student, uh, give them one month or one week to read. Uh, after the student read the books, you redistribute another set to check their knowledge. Of course, you have controls. Control in the sense that, you know, you have group of students who read the books and group of students who do not read the books. So it means you have pre-test and post-test of kind of survey. Uh, I have, this is interesting too, because I have never seen anybody doing that. I mean, at least at UTM. Most of the times, the questionnaire that I see is just cross-sectional, one-time cross-sectional uh, survey. That's it. So if you do have this kind of questionnaire, pre-test and post-test questionnaire, you need to know which one is which. I mean, you need to, because you have to check the score, for example, the score, uh, the, the, the how they answered the, the questionnaire. So you have to, you have to know which questionnaire belongs to which respondents so that you can check the scores before and after the, the book has been distributed or after the experiment or the treatment. So that kind of questionnaire requires you to know who answers which questionnaire. And this is the kind of questionnaire that you have at the front page that sort of like, you know, uh, a statement saying that you will not be using this data from this questionnaire for any other purpose than for academic purpose and then it will remain confidential because you will be able to tell who answered which questionnaire. All right, that's confidential. Another type of questionnaire is anonymous. Anonymous meaning that even the researcher themselves don't know who answered which questionnaire. So name is not asked of respondent. Right? And then because no other identifying codes are used, the researcher is unable to follow up with uh, non-respondents or mass data from pre-test and post-test. So this may not be a problem when doing random interviews, but if you are carrying out a survey that you want to check pre-test and post-test and anonymous will be a problem. Okay, I guess you cannot uh, carry out the, uh, your survey this way. Most of the time that I see uh, people do confidential kind of questionnaire, but most respondent will be very comfortable answering your questionnaire if it is anonymous. Uh, okay. Uh, be, okay, I think I'm, I'm down to my last slide here. These are the resources, okay? All right. So these are the resources. You can get more information from these resources. And that's it. So I think I spent like one hour here. Um, 